Good morning. Welcome to this Thursday's office. I'm happy to be with you this morning to talk a little bit uh, about God's Word and to pray. And my, what a week it's been. Uh, I think that there's nothing better that we could be doing this morning than praying together. And as I, as I thought what on earth uh, I should talk about today, um, my mind and heart were drawn to the, the way that Jesus instructed us to pray. And so I thought what it would be good for us to do is just to um, read, the, read the prayer that Jesus laid out for us in Matthew chapter 6, what is commonly known as the Lord's Prayer, and to talk a little bit about how we should pray in the world in which we live. Well, if you've got a Bible with you, um, why don't you turn it to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 7 where Jesus gives some advice about how to pray. And then I'm going to read all, all the way to verse uh, 13 here about in the read the Lord's Prayer aloud. And then just talk for a minute about it. So if you've got a Bible, um, flip over there to Matthew 6 or pull it up on your computer or your phone. Um, and let's read from God's Word together. So Matthew 6 verse 7 starts this way. Jesus says, And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Well, this prayer, you know, we, we, we say it a lot, at least if, if you come from any type of tradition uh, that was even just a smidge liturgical, you probably memorized this prayer. But what I, I really want us to focus on today is where this prayer finds itself in the book of Matthew. If you remember the book of Matthew well, chapter 6 is smack in the middle of Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus lays out what it's going to look like for people to live in the kingdom of heaven, even though they live on earth. That Jesus has brought the good news of the kingdom, and when we become members of that kingdom, we are given a new way to live. And so the Sermon on the Mount is the ethics of the kingdom, the how to walk uh, of the Bible, the, the, the section where we can look and say, okay, this is how we are supposed to live as disciples of Jesus, as citizens in the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus gets to this point where he talks about prayer. And what's really amazing about Jesus's prayer here is that he orients our hearts and our minds away from trying to curry God's favor away from kind of an obsession with uh, political structures or, the, or any type of powers of this earth, and toward love for God and love for neighbor. That he, in a sense, directs us higher than these things we tend to worry about, to God himself, to the plan that God has, to the will that God has for this world. And so really, the Lord's Prayer is amazing because what it does is it, it, it works in our hearts. It, it molds our hearts, it molds our desires to be more like God. And I think that's a good message for you. I, I think it's a good message for me, for all of us. I mean, I, as I think of um, all of the constant amount of information and anxiety that we have in these last few days, kind of typifies what we felt the whole year, that we've been kind of consumed with the, the question of whose will 
do we want to have done in our country and in our world? And so at least for me, when I read the Lord's Prayer, I read those first words, your kingdom come, your will be done, as a reminder for my heart to hope in, the, in God's kingdom alone and to desire God's will alone for this world. So no matter what happens when all the votes are tallied, we have this prayer. We have this hope that is steadfast and sure. And so I would encourage you today, if you feel a sense of anxiety, if you feel a sense of uncertainty, or if you even feel the bubbling up in your heart of anger, I pray that you would read this prayer aloud, that you would remember where your heart is truly supposed to rest, in God alone. I talked about that on Sunday as well. So that's my prayer for you today. Um, would we all pray and desire and hope that God's kingdom would come and God's will would be done. With that, let's go to this let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let's ask him that he would accomplish um, these things we see here in the Lord's prayer. Heavenly Father, we find ourselves this morning tired from all of the influx of news or tired of others talking about it if we've, we've abstained and feeling a sense, Lord, that um, we live indeed in confusing times. And so, Lord, I take great comfort as I read um, your son's words to us. Lord, as I read his direction on how we are to pray that I don't have to try to curry your favor by praying long, drawn-out prayers, Lord. But rather, I can pray a simple prayer like the Lord's Prayer. And it can work in my heart to draw me closer to you, that I might delight myself in you, and that you might give me the desires of my heart. And so, Lord, we do read this prayer today, and we ask fervently that your name would be hallowed. Lord, that we would recognize and reverence the holiness that is in your name. That we, Lord, would stand under your authority. That we would not presume to know what you are doing. That we would not presume to um, align you with any earthly power but rather we would see that you truly have all power and authority and honor and glory in yourself. And so, Lord, we do stand under your power. We do humble ourselves before you. We do hallow your name. We pray, Lord, because we reverence you, we pray that your kingdom would come and your will would be done. We pray, Lord, that as in heaven, all things obey you with joy and peace and security and certainty. Lord, that you would bring heaven down to us as you began with Jesus, our Lord. That you would finish the work that you started by sending him back. Lord, that he would, with the sword of his mouth, conquer the world by his love. Lord, that every knee would bow and every tongue confess, either willingly, Lord, to their glory or unwillingly to their destruction. Lord, we pray that your will would be done to restore the world, to make everything right. Lord, to wipe every tear away from our eyes and to bring us into closer fellowship with you, to be known by you and to know you. We pray, Lord, that you would direct our hearts to this, that you would make us to desire earnestly that your kingdom would come and your will would be done. And as we wait, Lord, for the completion of your work, which you began in Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord, that you would provide for our daily needs. We pray, Father, for those who are suffering from um, sickness in body or mind, that you would heal their bodies or heal their minds as well, Lord, that you would remove whatever oppresses them and speak peace to their lives. We pray, Lord, for those who are grieving this morning, 
I think particularly of Katerina Tacticos, Lord, who is grieving the loss of her father. I pray, Lord, that you would draw near to her today, and that you would speak peace to her heart, that you would help her to feel the Spirit's presence in her life today, and to have uh, his comfort, Lord, from him. Lord, we pray also that you would forgive us our debts. We confess our sins to you. We confess that our lives have not been attuned completely to your will to us, Lord, that we have desired other and worthless things. And Lord, we have been surprised when they don't give us what we, um, what we expect. And so Lord, we ask that you would forgive us our sins, forgive us of all the things we have done and left undone. Lord, give us uh, forgiveness for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. And because of your son, Jesus Christ, and the work he did on the cross, Lord, we forgive all those who have wronged us. Lord, we ask you that you would give us hearts of forgiveness, hearts of peace and love, that we would, like Jesus, look at those who even hate us and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Lord, we pray this earnestly. We ask for your mercy. We are so weak, Lord, and our hearts are pulled in so many ways that forgiveness is so challenging. I pray, Lord, that we would forgive and love all enemies so that we would no longer have enemies, but rather just fellow image bearers who need you. And finally, Lord, we ask that you would lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. We ask this morning, Lord, that you would Help us to see that the testing of our faith produces steadfastness, endurance, and hope. I pray, Lord, that as we go through the challenges of this day, that you would keep our hearts from being tempted to um, despair, Lord, to hope in any other thing, or to create any idol out of the things you've given us. Lord, we pray that you would help us to keep us from the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Lord, that you would preserve us from the evil one, that you would make, make it so that his schemes are not done in your people, that we would not be drawn away from our single allegiance to you, Lord, to be caught up and consumed with all of the vacillations of the world, which your, wor which your word tells us is... Uh, under the tyranny of the evil one. I pray you guard our hearts and minds, that you would direct us ultimately to your kingdom, to your power and to your glory. Lord, for to you belong all power, glory, and majesty. And we humbly ask you to draw near to us today. For by, for, by and in Jesus our Lord, through the Holy Spirit, which you've given to us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Lord be with you today. And again, when you find yourself in a place, or even when I find myself in a place of anxiety, um, doubt, confusion, may we both go to the Lord's Prayer. And we, may we both set our hearts on God's kingdom. God's will. The Lord be with you today. I hope to see you soon.